Gatling could possibly induce me to take his hand. Yeah, I think he is coming down here disgraceful. He knows perfectly well why. Oh, Jack, do you mind? There is some good in everyone. Ernest has just been telling me about his poor invalid friend, Mr. Bunbury. <laughs> 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 so perfect a reconciliation. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might leave the two brothers together. Cecily, you will come with me. Certainly, Miss Prism. My little task of reconciliation is over. You've done a beautiful act today, my child. Yes, I feel very happy. <coughs> you young scoundrel, Aldi, you must get out of this place at once. I don't allow any bummering here. I've put Mr. Ernest's things in the room next to yours, sir. I hope that is all right. What? Mr. Ernest's luggage, sir. I've unpacked it and put it into the room next to yours. His luggage? Uh, yes, sir. Three portmanteaus, a dressing case, two hat boxes, and a large luncheon basket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I can't stay for more than a week this time. <laughs> Merriman, order the dog cart at once. <coughs> Mr. Ernest has been suddenly called back to town. Yes, sir. What a fearful lie you are, Jack. I have not been called back to town at all. Yes, you have. Well, I haven't heard anyone call me back. Your duty as a gentleman calls you back. My duty as a gentleman has never interfered with my pleasures in the smallest degree. <laughs> well, I can quite understand that. Well, Cecily is a darling. You are not to talk of Miss Cardew like that. I don't like it. Well, I don't like your clothes. You look perfectly ridiculous in them. Why on earth don't you go up and change? It is perfectly childish to be in deep mourning for a man who's actually staying for a whole week with you in your house as a guest. I call it grotesque. You are <laughs> certainly not staying for a whole week as a guest or as anything else. You have got to leave by, by the 4-5 train. Well, I certainly wouldn't leave you so long as you're in mourning. That would be most unkind. If I was in mourning, you would stay for me, I suppose. I would think it very mean if you didn't. Will you go if I change my clothes? Yes, as long as you're not too long. I never knew anyone takes so long to dress and with such little result. <laughs> well, at any rate, that is better than always being constantly overdressed as you are. If I'm occasionally a little overdressed, I always make up for it by being immensely overeducated. <laughs> <laughs> Your vanity is ridiculous, your conduct an outrage, and your presence in my garden <coughs> is utterly absurd. <coughs> However, you have got to leave by the 4-5 train, and I hope you will have a pleasant journey back to town. This bummering, as you call it, has not been a very great success for you. I think it has been a great success. I am in love with Cecily, and that is everything. I must say before I go to make arrangements for another Bunbury. Ah, there she is. Oh, I'm really came back to water the roses. I thought you were Uncle Jack. Uh, he's gone to order the dog cart for me. Oh, is he going to take you for a nice drive? He's going to send me away. And have we got to part? Uh, I'm afraid so. It is a very painful parting. Oh, it's always painful to part with people to whom one has only just been introduced. The absence of old friends, one can enjoy their equanimity, but even a momentary separation from someone whom one has just met. It's, it's almost unbearable. Thank you. The dog cart is at the door, sir. It can wait, Merriman, for five minutes. Yes, sir. Cecily, I hope I do not offend you if I state, quite frankly and openly, that you seem to be in every way the visible personification of absolute perfection. I think your frankness does you great credit, Ernest. Come on, allow me. I will copy your remarks into my diary. Uh, do you really need a diary? <coughs> I'd give anything to look at it. May I? Oh, oh no. You see, you seem to be a very young girl's record of her own thoughts and impressions, and consequently, meant for publication. Well, it's paid in volume form. I do hope you will order a copy. But, pray, don't stop, Ernest. 
I delight to be taken down from dictation. I have reached absolute perfection. You may go on. I am quite ready for more. <coughs> uh, oh, don't cough, Ernest. When one is dictating, one should speak fluently, not cough. Besides, I don't know how to spell cough. <laughs> Cecily, ever since I first looked upon your wonderful and incomparable beauty, I have dared to love you wildly, passionately, devotedly, hopelessly. I don't think you should tell me you love me wildly, passionately, devotedly, hopelessly. Hopelessly doesn't seem to make much sense, does it? The film card is waiting, sir. Uh, tell her to come round next week uh, at the same hour. Yes, sir. I think Uncle Jack would be very much annoyed if he knew you were staying on until next week at the same hour. I don't care about Jack. I don't care for anyone in the whole world but you. I love you, Cecily. You will marry me, won't you? Oh, you silly boy, of course. Why, we've been engaged for the last three months. For the last three months? <laughs> yes, it will be exactly three months on Thursday. But how did we become engaged? Jack first confessed to us that he had a younger brother who was very wicked and bad, who of course formed the chief topic of conversation between myself and his prison. And of course, a man who is much talked about is always very attractive. One feels there must be something in him after all. I dare say it was foolish of me, but I fell quite in love with you, Ernest. <laughs> Darling, and when was our engagement actually settled? On the... 14th of February. Worn out by your entire ignorance of my existence, I determined to end the matter one way or another. And, after a long struggle with myself, I accepted you <coughs> under this dear old tree here. The next day, I bought this little ring in your name. Did I really give you this? It's very pretty, isn't it? <laughs> yes, you've wonderfully good taste, Ernest. The excuse I've always given for your leading such a bad life. Oh, and here's a little box in which I keep all your dear letters. <laughs> <laughs> my letters? But my own sweet Cecily, I have never written you any letters. Oh, you need hardly remind me of that, Ernest. I remember only too well how I was forced to write your letters for you. <laughs> 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 Let me read them, Cecily. Oh, oh no, they would make you far too conceited. The three you wrote me after I broke off the engagement was so beautiful and so badly spelled that even now I can't read them without crying a little. <laughs> but was our engagement ever broken up? Oh, of course it was. On the 22nd of March. <laughs> you can read the entry if you like. Today I broke off my engagement with Ernest. I feel it is better to do so. But it continues charming. <laughs> Why on earth did you break it off? What had I done? I had done nothing at all. Cecily, I am very much hurt indeed to hear that you broke it off, particularly when the weather was so charming. <laughs> it would have been a very serious engagement if it hadn't been broken off at least once. And I forgave you before the week was out. What a perfect angel you are, Cecily. Oh, you dear romantic boy. You'll never break off our engagement again, Cecily. Oh, I don't think I could now that I've actually met you. Besides, <laughs> there is the question of your name. Uh, yes, of course. You mustn't laugh at me, darling, but it's always been a girlish dream of mine to love someone of the name of Ernest. <laughs> well, something in that name that inspires one with absolute confidence. I pity any poor married woman whose husband is not called Ernest. <laughs> my sweet Cecily, do you mean to say you could not love me if I had some other name? What name? Oh, uh, any name you like. Uh, Algernon, for instance. Mm, but I don't like the name of Algernon. Uh, <coughs> well, then my own sweet, dear, loving little darling. Uh, there is no reason at all why I should object to the name of Algernon. It is not at all a bad name. In fact, it is rather an aristocratic name. Half the chaps who make it in a bankruptcy court are called Algernon. <laughs> Seriously, Cecily, <coughs> if 
if my name was Algy, couldn't you love me? I might respect you, Ernest. <laughs> I might admire your character, but I fear I would not be able to give you my undivided attention. Um, Cecily, your rector here is thoroughly experienced in the practice of all rites and ceremonies of the church, I suppose. Oh, oh yes. Dr. Chasville is a most learned man. He has never written a single book, so you can imagine how much he knows. <laughs> <laughs> I must seem at once a most important christening. I, I mean, most important business. Oh. Uh, I, I shan't be away more than half an hour. Well, seeing as we've been engaged since February the 14th, and I only met you for the first time this morning, I think it's very hard that you should leave me for so long a period as half an hour. Couldn't you make it 20 minutes? I'll be back in no time. <laughs> <laughs>